High Heel Knight. Welcome to my channel. This is my review of Aquaman. With reluctant bias, I must give the movie a B+. Aquaman is a 2018 superhero movie about a man of royal blood that was born outside of his parents' native country. That country has exotic and advanced technology far beyond anything that the rest of the world is aware of. There are factions within that nation who believe that not only is a conflict with the rest of the world inevitable, but that country should rule because of its advanced biological and technological superiority. The man of royal blood must travel to that country, challenge for the throne of the kingdom, and lead his people into a new geopolitical frontier. And if that sounds a lot like the premise of Black Panther, <laughs> that was my point. <laughs> uh, throughout this review, I'm going to be making lots of references to Black Panther and other properties. Here's how my view is going to work. I will list three things I liked about the movie. I will list three things that I did not like about the movie. And then I will discuss three factors that are affecting this movie that aren't completely the movie's fault. And then at the end, I will give my verdict. There will be timestamps in the description. And with that said, let's dive in to this review. So when it comes to the things I like, first I want to talk about Dolph Lundgren. Now Dolph Lundgren, uh, his performance isn't particularly spectacular or amazing in this film. It's just that two weeks ago I saw Creed 2, in which uh, Dolph Lundgren reprises his role as uh, Victor Drago. And in Creed 2, Lundgren puts on possibly the best performance of his entire career. It's dynamic. It's uh, personal. It's uh, you know really, really excellent. So it's just weird for me that I just saw London do this absolutely stellar performance, and now he's wearing a red wig and underwater riding a giant sea creature. I was just chuckling every time he said on the film. He doesn't do anything worth laughing about. It's just that timing of this amazing, dramatic excellent performance and now he's riding a fish monster so <laughs> i was just laughing uh, every time it came on screen the next thing i want to talk about is that this movie just wants to be cool which is really refreshing considering how Zack snyder pretty much set a very dour tone for this dceu or whatever they're calling this uh universe <laughs> you know it was just fun to see that this guy this aquaman he just wants to be cool the movie just wants to be cool it's uplifting it's fun you know like hey this is about a guy who talks to sea creatures and stuff you know let's just have fun and go with it and on that note i definitely appreciate it that sometimes it's just okay to just be cool or try to try to be fun and last thing I want to say as far as what I like was that the main villains lived. The main villains lived. I get so frustrated when a lot of superhero movies kill off villains. And in uh, this case, uh, when it comes to, compares to Black Panther, as much as I love Black Panther, not only did they kill off two of Black Panther's uh, traditionally uh, main villains, but two other villains became allies. Uh, so, like, they took out four villains in the one movie. So in this movie, as I was watching, like, wow, you know, the, these villains are really uh, interesting. They're not as interesting as the villains in Black Panther, but at the same time, there's a lot of room to go with these uh, villains if the movie gets uh, sequels and uh, or spinoffs and things like that. So I was very happy that the villains survived, and hopefully if there are more movies, we can uh, have these uh, characters return and really expand them. There's some really growth, great growth potential there, so I'm very, very, very happy that these wonderful villains survived the film. Now, on to the topics that I didn't like. First of all, I am sick and tired of couples in movies that bicker and bicker and bicker and bicker and bicker. Sometimes even coming to blows, not in this movie, but still in some movies, you know, they're just constantly going at it throughout the whole film. And then towards like the end of the second act, they sort of start liking each other. And by the end of the movie, they're kissing and they're in love and they want to, you know, be in a relationship. I'm like, like, I'm just so sick of that. I'm sick of it in action movies. I'm sick of it in comic movies. I'm definitely sick of that in romantic comedy movies. I'm just so sick of that trope. So, yes, please, I don't really know who might hear here, but please, let's end this. I don't mind banter. I don't mind playfulness. You know, banter and playfulness is fine, but the bickering and the 
antagonism. It's just, I'm sick of it. I'm, I'm just plain sick of it. Uh, the next thing that I didn't like was the uh, music and the score. Now, the music is fine, but it's not iconic. It's barely memorable. As I was leaving the theater, I had to force myself to try to remember the, the theme song for Aquaman because it's, it's really subtle. It's loud, yet subtle, and it's like just not that really memorable. Like you got to force yourself to remember it, as opposed to like Batman's uh, theme or you know Superman's theme. Granted, you can't really follow who John Williams. John Williams is the master, but still, it just doesn't come up as that kind of, especially since this movie wants to be so cool, and then Wonder Woman, she has still the best DCEU uh, theme song. That theme song is rocking. Like, that's sort of the theme song that Aquaman should be having, considering how uh, cool this movie wants to be. So yeah, on the music front, it, you know, the music, again, isn't bad, but it kind of drops the ball. It's not very iconic. And finally, we, uh, the thing I didn't like was that every time, or almost every time an action sequence had to start, there was just a loud kaboom beforehand. You know, people would be talking soft and calm and have a tender moment, and then boom! Some loud explosion happens and someone comes in and there's an action sequence. And then they're calm and talking and having a tender moment. And then boom! Another person comes crashing in or something explodes or something comes, you know, banging or gunfire or something. And it's like, it happened like at least three times in the movie, maybe even five, which is boom, boom, boom. You know, it's like, it, you can start an action sequence without some random giant explosion, okay? You know, it, 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 there's other ways to start action. We're all having a good time. We don't need this constant explosions to, to, to wake us up. We are enjoying this movie. So yeah, I was really, really frustrated about the explosions to action, explosion to action, explosion to action, explosion to action. I, I was even predicting it as I was watching the film. Really, really, really annoying. So here are some factors that are affecting uh, this movie, despite it being very fun and very cool, <laughs> and it's not really the film's fault. It, for the most part, it's just bizarre timing. Uh, you know, I mentioned how this movie is similar to Black Panther. Well, that's just the tip of the iceberg, okay? Along with Black Panther, it's similar to Thor, The Lord of the Rings, the Star Wars prequels, Masters of the Universe, Disney's Moana, Hercules, Atlantis movies, The Little Mermaid. There was a point where there's a character reveal and several people in the audience were clapping and clapping. Oh, that's so cool. And I was thinking, that's from How to Train Your Dragons 2. I mean, seriously, like the DreamWorks lawyers, someone get the lawyers of DreamWorks on the phone. That was practically plagiarism of How to Train Your Dragons 2. So, you know, this movie is coming out after so many other fantasy films have come out. I mean, superheroes have been around pretty much ever since movies have been around. Well, uh, with the uh, 2000 year, uh, with X-Men, we've just been slowly sitting getting more and more and more and more superhero movies to the point where, you know, we got movies for uh, Big Hero 6 and Teen Titans Go and Captain Underpants. And even uh, without the superheroes, we're still getting uh, large fantasy movies like the Star Wars and like, uh, you know, uh, even uh, something like Twilight and uh, uh, Harry Potter and all these other films. So it's just bad timing that this movie is coming out now when there have been so many other films that have done things similar to it. So it comes off more as this giant superhero ultra hyper fantasy remix ultra HD condition or something like that as opposed to really being a unique standalone film. Another thing that's affecting this movie is that it's in the shared universe. It's in the DCEU or whatever, again, whatever we're calling it. Which means I was having a serious question throughout the whole movie. Where's Superman? Okay. <laughs> There's a sequence where uh, these um, oil tankers and all these old wrecked ships wash up on shores all over the planet. There's about a couple thousand or maybe even a million tons of old debris washing up all over the shores. You know, doing, I don't know, probably millions, maybe even billions worth of property damage along the shores. And none of the other Justice League members are going to investigate, including Superman. And then there's this conclusion battle that involves uh, underwater spaceships shooting lasers and like sea creatures throwing lava fireballs. I mean, it's basically an underwater version of a battle of five armies. And it climaxes with this giant 200 foot tall sea monster. And you're telling Superman is not going to like just fly by and check it out, go, hey, uh, you know, what's all this? <laughs> like, I mean, at least with. Um, Thor, the Dark World, there's a moment where you're wondering, well, why doesn't Thor just call the other Avengers? But uh, it's okay because the Avengers weren't really a team, and they just sort of got together for that one time, and then they went to separate ways. And then with the 
Thor did call him, they can't get across a planet uh, super fast. But Superman, he, he, he flies around the, the planet within a second. So where is Superman? Is he off on another dimension helping out heroes? Is he shacking up with Lois Lane in the Fortress of Solitude? Is he in a coma after lifting a giant kryptonite island into space? Is he having a prolonged imaginary conversation with Jonathan Kent? And even if Superman wasn't available, what about Batman? You remember Batman, Mr. If there's so much as a 1% chance that he is our enemy, then we must take it as an absolute certainty. Okay? If he went, you know, you know obsessively crazy because Superman and Zod trashed Metropolis, then he must going out of his mind that the world's coast was just suddenly damaged by uh, one secret society. So, you know, he why isn't he investigating? Why isn't he having cyborg double-checking the satellites? Why does he have uh, the Flash uh, run around the coast to find Iron Man company? Or even uh, Wonder Woman. You know, they're sort of strange about how the Greek gods work. I think they're gone. I think they're dead. But she is still the niece of Poseidon. So she could probably get into the situation somehow. So yeah, I mean, Aquaman is supposed to be a standalone movie. So yeah, if there was a standalone movie, which there were another superheroes, fine. But when you got a shared universe, you got to tell me what happened with the other superheroes, including Superman. And finally, what's affecting this movie, and this is a little bit more of the film's uh, problem, is that it has a lot of information to give and the world building suffers. Do you remember the trailer when Aquaman and Mira gleefully leapt into the Sahara Desert? You were probably wondering what I was wondering. What is Aquaman doing in the desert? Doesn't he have to replenish with water every couple of hours? Why is he just in the desert casually walking? Well, apparently he can just be in the desert and Mira can just be in the desert because they jump in without so much as a water bottle. And they're there for like several hours and they just casually stroll like they're, you know, having a Sunday, you know, walk in the park. This is Aquaman, you know, taking away his water weaknesses, like taking away the kryptonite weakness. And then when uh, Aquaman and his uh, half-brother Orm challenge for the throne uh, in Black Panther, on Challenge Day, they take Black Panther's superpowers away. Black Panther has enhanced speed and uh, strength and reflexes, and he has his body armor of vibranium. They take all that away on Challenge Day to make the fight fair. So in Aquaman, they just straight up fight. There doesn't seem to be any particular advantage one way or other. So it's like, well, what makes Aquaman really special than the other Atlantis? I guess because he can talk to aquatic life. I guess that's what makes him separate. But at the same time, there are seven, <laughs> seven types of Atlanteans, and some can breathe outside of water, and some can't. And then there's some that are crab people, and there's some that are briny, scaly people, and then there's some that are actually fish people, and there's some that are humanoid. And it's like, it's just throwing information, 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 and. I'm just barely following, if I'm just barely following, I can't imagine what people who are just casual fans of Aquaman are wondering, especially, seriously, what is Aquaman doing in the desert? So yeah, the world building suffers, and, um, and that's why I gotta uh, you know, bring the grade lower than I usually would. As much as I was enjoying this film, the world building, all this information that they have to throw and not really establishing what Aquaman can and can't do, and what all these other Indians can and can't do, and seriously, where is Superman? So as I said, this movie is very similar to other superhero movies and other uh, fantasy movies that have come before it, and I'm not holding that against the movie. I see this as more as an inevitability. At some point in time, there was going to be a movie that was very similar to what's come before, and that time is now. I mean, think about it. As much as I've compared Aquaman to Black Panther, one of the common complaints about Black Panther is how it's so similar to The Lion King. And guess what? Next year, we're going to have a live-action version of The Lion King. And regardless of whatever uh, version Disney gives of The Lion King, it is a rip-off of a Japanese animated film with an extremely similar premise to the point where our lawyers got involved. So yeah, uh, as you know, say goes, the more things change, the more things seem the same. So yes, I'm not holding the whole, you know, it was so similar to all these other properties. It was inevitable, so that's what's happened. And with the, uh, you know, the lack of other superheroes not mentioning, 
it's annoying, but again, it's supposed to be a standalone film, so I gotta repress that question of where is this character? Where is that character? What about this? What about that? I have to let it be a standalone film, so I don't hold that against it. But I have to hold the world building against this film. I have to. I have ripped apart movies like the uh, Transformers movies and the Resident Evil movies and even recently the Nutcracker in the Four Realms. <laughs> okay? If I'm going to uh, knock those movies for their terrible world building, then i got to subtract points for Aquaman for its bad world building. It's not the worst world building I've ever seen. It's not awful, but at the same time, I, gotta, I have to, for sheer consistency, take off points for the bad world bunny. So as much as I love this movie and I want to see it again and again and again for many, many years to come, I must reluctantly with bias give the grip movie a B plus grade. Okay, those are my thoughts on Optiman. Thank you very much for watching this video. I greatly appreciate it. Be sure to share whatever comments you like in the comment section. Be sure to like, share, and subscribe or dislike, share, and subscribe. Once again, I'm High Heel Knight. Remember, find inspiration everywhere.